Welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, we are in May, and May is blossoming with back east with cherry blossoms and the tree and here spring is on well i for those who celebrated eid congratulations well it's not a congratulations a happy eid and uh, those are who celebrate just about anything in life i want to say may god's blessings be with us and celebration is the way to go Today's topic is a continuum of what we started last month, but May is more of a feminine. It is about womanhood. It is about feelings, thoughts, ideas. You know, next month, actually not next month, next week is going to be, we're celebrating Mother's Day. But so what are the, some of the traumatic things we talk about? Today, I want to talk about trauma, what is trauma, and how you can cope with certain parts of trauma. You know, if you are a member of my Daily Gratitude, which is right here on Facebook, you can join us. It's a private group every single day, daily. We post something either informational, inspirational, and something that is uh, educational or just an affirmation to make you feel good and it's absolutely wonderful I've had so many comments about I look forward to your daily affirmations and everything actually if you become a member with our um, our website which is healwithin.com and if you go there you log in not only you receive a gift but you also become a um, uh, you become a part of our system that we send you information. Plus, you can always become a member, and for a small little fee, you get so many wonderful things, and you will realize the value of that, of getting daily affirmations, which some of my clients truly look for it. And they recite it, they reaffirm it, and then the audio recording that comes with it. Plus, you get so many values as to uh, becoming a part of getting notifications about the groups that we are doing here at Heal Within, uh, women's groups that we are putting together. As a matter of fact, starting May, we are. And oh, so much more. So go ahead and join healwithin.com or just become a part of our private group right here on Facebook, which is called The Daily Gratitude. You can check it and send it and uh, request an invite and I'll be more than happy to include you. So today's topic is about trauma. Actually, what is trauma? And in our daily gratitude, I posted something, and the reason I'm bringing it up is because of this, because trauma can cause so many, so many things in our life. It's that causes us from fight to flight, right? But what exactly is trauma? And for you to understand, 70% of the U.S. population, and I'm not talking about globally, but the U.S. population experiences trauma from so many call birthing traumatic and yet is beautiful. Do you understand? But So what is traumatic to one person may not always be traumatic to another person. So when we talk about trauma, we often refer to traumatic events like diseases, sexual assault, as, as I said, some people call it like birthing could be traumatic effect because of the entire thing and or war, right? But in reality, the word trauma describes a person's subjective response to an event in their life. And 
and it could be just about anything. Miscarriage, the entire experience, might be traumatic, yes. Being uh, sexually abused uh, can be traumatic. Uh, war, the sounds and everything, walking on eggshells, constantly being in that can be traumatic. Or one of my clients walking down the street, holding her mom's hand when she was only seven or eight years old and a bird comes and flutters in front of her eyes and she is scared of birds. And to her, that was the most traumatic thing that there was. And to this day, every time she walks around and she sees birds anywhere, uh, she goes into this convulsive, without realizing, anxiety attack. So understanding all that, theoretically, any experience could be traumatic. So depending on how a person perceives it. Again, it's all perception, right? The same way as taking a test might be traumatic for one person. And there are folks, and I had a friend that took the bar exam in five different states and she passed it just like that each time on the first try. And there are people who can't even tr pass the first, the second, or the third time. That's why they come to me and hypnosis is one of the most beneficial things to help you with understanding the traumatic experience or the anxiety, the underlying causation, which is in your subconscious mind, right? Because the subconscious mind really doesn't understand any emotions, but it's just like a programming. It does what it's asked to. So, sometimes trauma can be described as just generational. Like my grandparents that came from the Armenian genocide and everything that my grandmother went through and what she was witness to and everything that happened in her life and how she reacted to, to my mom, from my mom to me and how I cope with certain things, it could be that there is an underlying trauma, emotional trauma, physical trauma, uh, mental, right? Or what we call it a generational lineage trauma that continues on. So again, perception and how we cope with certain things. So this type of trauma includes racial or ethnic discrimination, some call that. And it's all about our responses, how we respond to certain things and how it's been passed down. So is trauma stored in the body? Yes, trauma is stored in the body. It's very much possible that, you know, we know muscle has memory and it can be stored in there. And the incentive, the reaction to trauma is the physical reaction to traumatic experiences. So the subconscious mind holds that information just like the bird or something traumatic that has occurred maybe as a child. I have had many clients that have gone through abusive relationships um, in a DV situation and or abu being abused or assaulted as a child and that traumatic experience still lingers on in their adulthood. Certain ones reveal itself in a different way. So the question was asked today, which is great question. And, you know, the question was asked today, it's, would you say that trauma is relative to what our brain can handle? And that one person may not see something as traumatic as another will. And my response was, we all deal with trauma in a different way. We all cope with everything, traumatic or not, the fight and flight, or, you know, it's fight, flight, and what? Pause. 
So we all freeze, pause, same thing. We all deal with it in a different way. Some choose to evoke it, bring it forward to understand what's going on. Why are they either acting or reacting to certain things so that they can truly embrace the reality What's going on? Why am I having this kind of a reaction? Why am I falling apart every time I see this or I hear this or something like that happens? Why is this affecting my body like this? Where is this coming from? So all those questions to embrace the reality and say, ah, this is why. And the only reason we do this because we want something better in our life. Remember a few weeks ago, we talked about communication. Every time we communicate, every time we do something is for a better result, for a better way of um, having answers, a better way of communication is I want to feel good and I want my message to convey what I think, what I want, what I feel, so that when we have this dialogue, you too feel better. So everything is about feel good. So why is it that we get this, go to evoke this traumatic experiences is not to rehash it, but to reopen that in order to just shed a light it doesn't mean that we have to poke it, and sometimes poking it is not a necessity, but just to shed a light, to go, aha, now I understand. Now I understand what went on, what's going on, and okay, I can do something about this. I can either change myself, my responses, my way of coping with it, my coping mechanism, I can shift it, I can change it, only so that I can evolve, evolve for a better result, always for a better result. Because what I'm feeling or how I'm responding and the reaction I get from my responses is not feeling good. And that's why we always want to feel better and make a change for the better, for the healthier, for the way that it's more conducive all now why we do all that is because it's something that people talk about you know yes she responds that we talk about it at HD ADHD group and so coping mechanisms for something like that is to understand to truly understand, and it's important to remember that while these reactions can feel distressing, they all natural way of coping. And it's a it's awakening a trauma. And while we ought to adapt healthy coping mechanisms to deal with this, we also need to stop the blame and for experiencing any kind of an emotion and find the ways to heal it. So how do we heal? I call it to heal, uh, to move forward in life. Sometimes you need to heal the wound. Truly, I've healed many wounds to be where I am. As a matter of fact, this weekend, I was with family members and I call it, we sat around that family therapy table and it's a round table. And few of us, as we're sitting, we were reminiscing about family, certain things. And as we're discussing all that, so many things came up. And it was so good. It's like sitting at a round table, like in the old days when the chief turns that, um, like the round, the bottle, when we spin the bottle, uh, whoever is facing had the permission to speak while everyone else listened, truly. You're not allowed to speak until it is your turn. So, and it was so wonderful over this table. We talked about hurt, wounds, um, forgiveness, 
in understanding and how I have gone through so many of my forgiveness and the other family member didn't even know about it. It was just amazing. If we can do it in a healthy way. So coping mechanisms are very important. And how we cope with adversity and uh, trauma is this. I suggested that understanding breath work because causing a body to mind and be activated when we find ourselves in a traumatic way is like being in the airplanes in the old days they give you a bag they say just breathe into it breath work and understanding the trauma that occurred then is not occurring at this very moment so that's the reality if you become present with the reality one be present with reality. Number two, understanding that trauma heals, uh, breath work can also heal traumatic experiences. It's like I'm giving myself oxygen, vitality at this very moment to understand that I am safe. I am safe. And breath work is also good because it improves your focus and attention helps your emotional pain and gives you all that so sit down on a mat in a comfortable position right and make sure that your legs are not crossed and as you sit center yourself ground yourself and make sure that you are in a place even if you are in a uh, busy place and everything, that when you ground yourself, you can even put the palms of your hand on, on the floor or something like that and very gently lean back. Make sure that there is something you can lean back in the chair or a wall or if you are safe on your mat, you ground yourself, center yourself, your back, all your muscles, everything is aligned, your uh, spine is all aligned to the best that you can, to the best that you can, right? And there is no perfect way of doing this. Mm, my tummy is growling. It's like adjusting to what I am saying. So once you do this, make sure that your feet are not crossed. And you can just sit as relaxed as possible and change the direction of your movement upwards moving from your core to just thinking that everything that has been inside i can just bring it up and release it i can bring it up and release it in thoughts i can bring it up and release it in as i exhale releasing it and as you breathe in and out easily and gently taking as many breaths as you can and then calm yourself down make sure that one hand is on your tummy mm. and as you breathe in and out easily and gently maybe even rocking yourself ever so softly imagine all the movement with each and every breath as you inhale bringing oxygen and vitality in that you exhale and release all blame hurt pain shame guilt no matter what it is just think it and breathe it release it think it breathe in exhale release and as you stretch yourself you can even stretch and just like an accordion and very gently center yourself and remain come into a stillness when you feel your body 
and realize that no matter what's happening, no matter what's going on, that you can cope with this. Even the term spirituality, when we talk about it, refers to a process seeking meaning in your life and reflecting on your internal experiences. Spiritual spirituality may not always be about connecting to the universe or God or the angels or all the gods, no matter what. Spirituality is Becoming one with your own spirit, with own self, with you. And having this connection within yourself, right? Just with a show of hands, let me know how many of you have experienced this. That when you become still, when you are connected, you continue to be an excellent communicator and looking great. Keep up the work. Thank you so much, Michael. Hello, Adrian. Hi, Seta. Understanding that communication physically, mentally, emotionally, consciously, and subconsciously is our primitive way of doing it. It's communicating. And most of us do this unconsciously. And yet, when you become aware, when you tap within yourself consciously saying and deciding that I want to become aware so anything in my life, if it was traumatic, if it was difficult, if it is painful, either physically, mentally, or emotionally, I no longer choose to keep it, okay? And I choose no longer to hold on to it. You see, so many of us hold on to it for a reason or not. And that's the experiences becomes broader can, in a way that be, becomes defined as I am. So without knowing that research shows that a greater sense of spirituality fosters our own sense of connection within ourselves and it aids in our own post-traumatic post -traumatic healing. A sense of knowing that I have the power within me to heal, to become better, to communicate the essence of who I am and understanding thoughts, my ideas, my concepts, my images that all come together for a betterment of who I am and my relationships with not only with people, but with myself, my surrounding, with money, with health, with every aspect of who I am. So when you believe and you come to believe in yourself more so than what other people say, you connect and tap within yourself. So whether it's through becoming one and uh, doing this self-care and how is it that we do this phrase of self-care has become trendy in the last years and self-help books and everything is it's a basics of our drive to know that we value ourselves. The drive to eat, sleep, even breathe, right? It's for you to know that you too are as important, that you too matter as much as the ones that you love and care for. So, Science truly supports this basic human need for self-care. And about 70% of social workers who work in traumatic situations, I mean, with traumatic uh, clients who have experienced trauma and or secondary traumatic stressors, and the effects which can be reduced by just effective physical, emotional, and professional self-care. So if there is any way that I can be of assistance to you and give you the tools and the techniques 
and tap within yourself, self, uh, inner self, or your subconscious mind to just simply evoke, then to embrace. And so that just like my client has no more fears of birds and another client stopped smoking because started smoking at age 23 only because when he came back from the funeral after his father's funeral came back and everyone was in the living room and everything and he missed his father that he had, they had such deep connection with his father and as he's sitting in the kitchen just reminiscing suddenly he sees his father's a pack of cigarettes and you know what he did he picked up a cigarette and until age 23 he couldn't stand smoking and he would always tell his father stop smoking it's going to kill you it's going to kill you and although the father did not die of lung cancer and it was other complications he picks up the cigarette and he starts to smoke it right but of course he continues on doing that even though he didn't like it and then it became a habit and then habit becomes what a part of your behavior when you do it over and over over and over over and over and by the time he came to me he was 39 years old so 24 39 that's 15 years later he is at my office saying he's got two kids and he no longer wants to stop uh, he no longer wants to smoke and he wants to quit smoking of course teaching we can't be quitters but we choose to stop and then the language how we speak so that the subconscious mind agrees with the conscious mind instead of bypassing certain words and communication right all that when you come here and for us to understand the core that traumatic experience back to trauma what is traumatic experience to one person may not be to another that was his traumatic experience missing his father and as he's sitting there smoking then with everything else was going on he felt a sense of connection so as he's sitting here when we did the hypnosis on it was our third or fourth uh, session in hypnosis he remembers that as we're walking him through this scenario sitting there and some people say no 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 don't go through that traumatic experience but yes it's shedding it's hovering above like a drone it is not happening at that very moment so you are physically mentally and emotionally safe right He understands, oh, I picked up the cigarette. I felt a sense of connection. I missed him so. And since then, he was doing it for that. Once he realizes this, not only that traumatic experience became such a beautiful experience. Oh, now I know. And he stopped. He literally stop smoking he no longer needed to have that why because we ask the subconscious would you be willing to let go and still have the connection to father yes consciously will you be willing to not smoke and find something else that you can give an oral satisfaction if need be if need be or have another sense, maybe look at the albums and remember father is there or all that. Yes. Pow. Merging together. Hmm. The beauty of the subconscious mind and the conscious. And called I am. Bingo. Sometimes it's as simple as this and sometimes it may not be as simple as that. And yet you have the power to heal within you have the power to tap within and you are as important as anyone else so i hope today's message 
of Heal Talk Tuesday was beneficial to you. My name is Lisa Bubari. I'm your expert hypnotherapist. And I am here for you. Until next week, I thank you for being here, being present. Please go to healwithin.com for any thoughts, questions, anything that you wish. Become a part of our tribe, our community. Become a member and join us. We've got events coming to, uh, in your um, coming soon. And we also have group meetings coming soon that it's all live right here. And those are going to be absolutely amazing. So join us. Be part of healwithin.com. And until next week, I bid you goodbye. God bless you, and may the universal light surround you. Bye-bye. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, 